A massive explosion has torn through the Lebanese capital, Beirut, killing at least 70 people and injuring more than 3,700. It's not yet known what caused the explosion, but Lebanon's prime minister says his country is facing a catastrophe and Beirut is in mourning. He vowed to hold to account whoever was responsible. The huge blast at the port sent shockwaves across the city, destroying many buildings and blowing out windows several miles away. Hospitals across the city were quickly overwhelmed. Officials fear the death toll will rise sharply. Here's our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen. And just to warn you, his report contains distressing images. It was a massive explosion. What? Another view what? from the bay. And from the streets. What happened? <gasps> oh my. Oh my god. It looked as if dozens are dead and several thousand injured. <laughs> And a country already deep in crisis has been hit by a catastrophe. I don't know what happened. I was fishing. I heard there was a fire. I turned and started to head home and heard something explode. And then this happened. This was the fire in Beirut port. The flashes, they say, were fireworks. Then something much bigger ignited. Lebanon's interior minister told local media it was ammonium nitrate, which had been stored there since 2014. It can be used as fertilizer or to make explosives. This is downtown Beirut, close to the parliament building. Since the end of last year, Lebanon has been paralyzed by a political and economic crisis and street demonstrations before the country was gripped by the pandemic. The damage has spread across the city. The shock will run much deeper. And this tragedy risks pushing the Lebanese further into despair. Hassan Diab, the Prime Minister, broadcast to the nation. He told them that those responsible would pay the price. <laughs> Beirut's hospitals, already pressed hard by COVID-19, are faced with hundreds of casualties. We were at home. We heard what sounded like fireworks. We thought it was a container in the port that was on fire. A few seconds later, we were flying through the air. Lebanon will get international help, which until now its friends have been reluctant to give because of corruption and incompetence in Lebanon's wealthy elite. But public anger, already strong, will demand real change at last if Lebanon's rulers cannot heal the wounded, fix the damage and punish the guilty. And there is one big question. Who allowed the storage of so much deadly explosive for so long in a warehouse so close to the city centre? Jeremy Bowen, BBC News. Well, we can go live now to BBC Arabic's Beirut correspondent, Karine Torbe, who's at one of the hospitals treating some of the very many people who've been injured. And the death toll is rising fast, and almost 4,000 people known to have been injured. Describe the scene where you are now. Where I'm standing in front of the emergency gate of one of the hospitals, people are still coming here either to check on their relatives or to check whether their relatives are inside the hospital because uh, there are still so many people uh, unaccounted uh, for. But just to give you an idea how overwhelmed the hospitals are here and everywhere else in all Lebanon, but mainly in Beirut, um, I mean, the, the, the injured have been brought to hospitals by, by thousands. They haven't been able to treat them only in, 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 uh, in, uh, in rooms 
I have brought them to um, corridors, to offices everywhere, the whole hospital, every single, uh, every single space in the hospital has been turned into an emergency unit. People are still coming in here. You can see uh, traces of blood all over the, the floor and uh, also you can see how uh, distressed and how people are in real shock and uh, panic. Hours after this incident, it's impossible to say what is the, the final toll and whether this is, uh, I mean, and whether we will see uh, a rising toll throughout the night because people are still being rushed into hospitals all over the country. Karine Torbe in Beirut there. Thank you. Well, our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, is with me now. Terrible scenes in Beirut. We still don't know what caused this. But as you said in your report, this has come at a very difficult time, very sensitive time for Lebanon. Yeah, it's an appalling tragedy which has been inflicted now in a country that was already really suffering badly because of an economic collapse, because of a deep-seated political crisis caused by a whole welter of things, by COVID-19, of course, it's been badly hit by that, back into lockdown, hyperinflation, people's savings destroyed, real wages cut, you name it, they've had it, and now they've got this. And then there's the, there's the regional context as well. The Israelis very quickly said they had nothing to do with this. Normally, they might leave that open if they had, so that sounds credible. The issue with them is the trouble down on the border in the south between Hezbollah, the Lebanese Shia group, close to Damascus, close to Tehran, and the Israelis. Uh, they have been locked in their own escalation in recent weeks. Now, this catastroph catastrophic explosion in Beirut will have consequences nationally and possibly even regionally if it further destabilizes Lebanon. Sharon Byrne, our Middle East editor. Thank you.